Okay, um, hello everyone. Um, this is Counter Yolo, bringing you another video in Star Trek Online. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the new Undine ships that came out last week. Um, yeah, a couple days old, but as I said before, I do new Star Trek Persons videos every Monday, the Monday after the um, the new starships come out. So we'll start off with um, just a basic overview of the two subclasses that the ships come from, and, and compare those to the, what the new ships are and how lackluster or not that they might be. And then we'll go over uh, just a handful of ships for each one of them that I, I feel most closely resembles um, the exact ships themselves. I'm not gonna compare it against every single ship in the game. That would just be a waste of time for everyone. Um, and then I'll just quickly, very, very briefly go over, over the traits and the consoles from the ships themselves. And then of course, there'll be a TLDR at the very end, like normal. There'll be time links in, in the description. If I have time, I'll also add some stuff in terms of time links on the actual video itself. So um, to get started, um, I'll start off with the Undine Cruiser. And with the Undine Cruiser, it's in the standard cruiser subclass. Yes, there are like six different subclasses of cruisers, but there's actually a cruiser subclass of the cruiser classes. So the cruiser subclass um, has the standard mastery package, which is a little lackluster, frankly. Um, two of the four points give you damage res resistance rating, which Considering we have the, the Endeavor system nowadays, it's kind of lackluster there, but at least HP regen and extra HP is still nice for someone who wants to tank. Um, you do have full cruiser commands, but you don't have access to dual cannons, and you, and you, don't, you do not have a, a hang, hangar bay, which for a lot of captains inside this game nowadays, many of them will just take a Dreadnought cruiser over just a standard cruiser because their stats are extremely similar on, on average. And of course, there's also the Vengeance, which is really, really strong in and of itself. Versus an average of all of like the 100 plus cruisers in the game, the standard cruiser subclass on average has a little bit lower turning and inertia versus the other cruisers, but otherwise is about what you would expect. Now, when it comes to our new Undine Biocruiser, um, again, just like the Tier 5 U version, it's a 1.4 hull, 1.1 shields. Back in the day, this was really, really, really nice for its base stats. Versus stuff today, not quite as much. Um, you do get, get Commander Command and Lieutenant Commander Universal Pilot, which is nice. Um, this is one of the few ships in the game with one Commander Seat and three Lieutenant Commander Seats. I personally love this a lot as, as a tank myself. I know a lot of people don't, and I know a lot of people are going to be pushed off by the fact that this is a, a new cruiser with only three tactical consoles. However, um, if you look at the consoles over, over here, there's lots of great ways to still fill out the rest of your consoles if you're wanting to do lots of damage. There's five great crit severity consoles in the game that's usable by all starships. Then of course, when you add in the Lork console, the ultimate console from the Lobi store, plus DPR and Domino, you can easily fill out all those other non-tactical consoles with damage type of types of consoles and still do great DPS with this ship. Is that going to be as, as good as, you know, straight crit severity tackle consoles from your fleet? Maybe not, but it's still going it, to, it will still perform okay. And I mean, I think Timberwolf recently just did a 100k plus DPS run in IC with, with, the, with the Kobayashi Maru, which only has one tactical console and six abilities in total on the ship. So, I mean, look, everyone's going to complain about, you know, how weak or strong certain ships are. All ships can pay and perform decently in this game. It's just what it comes down to. A lot of it just comes down to your personal preferences, what you like in, in, in the base stats. For this pickle ship, for instance, I mean, it's basically average on most of its stats. It has ridiculously high turning and impulse for a cruiser subclass. It's just about on the high end for turning, and it's higher than any other impulse rating for a cruiser subclass. Which, combined with its seating, it very much reminds me of the Temporal Light Cruiser from Promo Packs, honestly, when it comes to the base stats and such. Just that it's Command Pilot instead of Temporal Operative Command of that particular ship. Also of note, of course, is that Undine ships have that improved hull regen passive. I never really noticed it too much when I used when I flew the tier 5U versions of these ships. The SEO wiki is a little cryptic in terms of how much that actually does. What I don't know, and it's, it's I think it's something that, that that 
hopefully will be discussed more. Um, maybe other people have, and I just haven't seen the right videos to see this. I don't know if that improved whole regeneration is actually improving the base, the actual base, like that's coming from the whole ratio, and and makes it basically making it as like maybe like a one point four to five whole ratio in terms of whole regeneration standpoint, or if it's just added whole regen, just like all other normal sources of added whole regen does, the bases off of off your base whole and chill regeneration. I don't honestly know. Um, and I haven't looked into the stats and such. And so I don't really feel like a lot of people are going to look into that in particular because that's not a damage type of stat. Most people look, look at the stats that deal extra damage and that doesn't do that. But that is one of the big things that, that's going for the Undine ships. So hopefully it works like the former instead of the latter that I explained so that it's more enticing for players. Uh, when it comes to the other... Um, Undine Starship, the Undine um, Bio Warship. Um, when it comes to destroyers and warships, um, they are a variant of the Escort class. Um, the differences for them, um, now destroyers and warships, the difference between those two is that destroyers are like regular escorts in terms of their weapon layout. They have they have five or seven we 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 weapons in total plus an experimental weapon, while the warships get rid of that experimental weapon for just an extra weapon. So they they have eight regular weapons in total instead of destroyers with seven plus the experimental. For most players in the game, they would they would prefer a standard eight weapons, which is why warships are quite a bit more popular than, than destroyers for a lot of, of the player base. That being said, for both of them, they have the same mastery package. They get rid of the lousy defense um, part of the regular escort package, and they get an extra 15% crit severity in place of it which makes this particular mastery package the most offensive mastery package for directed energy weapon built in the entire game. So as long as you are doing site site warp, um, really, um, this is the mastery package that you're probably going to be wanting when, when it comes to um, starships. So if they, if they add more warships um, in the game that are more meta um, than some of the more other things in the game too, I mean, we've got plenty of strong warships as well, but... Warships are fantastic. It's just what it comes down to. Their only real downside, technically, is that they have thought they have much lower turning and inertia than your standard average escort. That being said, this is also one of the subclasses that has access to like Commander Temper Operative and Commander Pilot. This this undie warship has Commander Pilot, so that's going to counteract a lot of the turning and inertia that you're losing to to be a warship and have more offensive potential. And again, for this Undine Warship, 1.115 hull, 1.0 shields. Not super spectacular, but again, it's another Commander Tactical and Triple Lieutenant Commander CD. Um, a lot of DPS players don't like the Lieutenant Commander Science. A lot of them prefer just to have Tactical Engineering mostly than like an Ensign Science for ha 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 Hazard Emitters. Um, it's where a lot of builds that I see happen to have. But Commander Pilot gives you pilot, pilot maneuvers. Make better intel. Gives you override subsystem safeties, which is pretty nice. Or you can do the double intel team and, you know, have, 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 have a pseudo cloaking build effectively on your ship. Which is, that kind of functions the way that I hope that battle cloaks will function in the future, frankly. Now, whenever you can, you compare this to the actual averages for destroyers and warships this ship actually is pretty lackluster um i was actually surprised um when i was initially looking at you know the actual stats I was like this this doesn't look too bad oh versus the average it's average hull lower shields lower inertia smidge at higher impulse but otherwise it's basically an average warship with Commander Tactical and Triple Lieutenant Commander C. And slightly higher hull regen because of the passive thing for ending. Which actually might mean for future Starship comparisons, I might actually reference this ship a lot more just because it's so average for most of, of, of its stats. Um, I was using it like the Jonah Vanguard ship for average, but I think this might fill the average role better for comparison purposes in the future. 
Um, now, as for the star surprise and sins themselves, of course, what I'll do first for each of these is I will compare it versus the original, the, the tier 5U version. Um, both of these ships had free tier 5U upgrades, if I remember, remember correctly. Um, so really for the differences here is that if you happen to own the tier 5U, here is basically differences of what you're actually getting to get the, the, the tier 6. Now, obviously between the two, you're getting a spe the specialization station seating. But additionally for the Undine Cruiser, you're getting a Lieutenant Commander tactical ability. That's actually pretty decent. Um, what that basically means now is, especially if you want to tank in the Undine Battle Cruiser, you have a choice now. Do you want to make the Lieutenant Commander Universal another tactical? Or maybe do you want it to be engineering? You know, for extra um, defensive potential and use a lot of those Commander Engineering Command abilities for more command-based abilities and have the Commander Universal for more engineering-based instead. Um, that's definitely a choice that you can make now. Before, it was almost like, well, it's for tanks, if you're going to be directing energy weapons, at minimum, you ideally want tactical team, attack pattern beta or attack pattern delta, and fire, fire at, at will. And that's three abilities, and you only had two base, so you basically had to make the other seat tactical for it to function properly. Now it's a choice, and now it's up to you for what you want to do with it. Now versus other ships, these are the two that initially came to mind to me. Uh, was was the Presidio, Presidio, I'm saying that right, from, from the Sea Store, a ship that I basically never talk about anymore because I hate the ship, um, as well as the Temporal Light Cruiser from Probopax. I feel like these two are different variants of what the Undine ship is. Um, the Temporal Light Cruiser, I mean, both of them have 1.375 hulls so, and a little bit higher than 1.1 shields. So the relatively hull and shields is turbulence is pretty similar. Temporal Light Cruiser has, has an 11.5 turning. So it's very, very similar to the Undine ship. It's lower impulse because back then cruisers really didn't have higher than 1.5 or 1.6 impulse when the ship came out, just the way it was back then. Um, and, and similar inertia as, as well. And again, triple lieutenant commander sitting with, with, with Commander Temple Robert. Because most of the ships when this thing came out was, was, were, were Temple Robert. That was, that, was that was the thing back then when Agents of Yesterday came out. The Presidio, though, um, is a, a Commander Command starship from, from the Sea Store. So if, if you really want Commander Command, that, that's a decent option as well. Also, both these ships have four tactless um, con consoles, so if that's really a deal breaker for you for the Undine ship. Um, there's other options out there for you too. Um, keep in mind, most of the ships though that are that have have command seating are Lieutenant Commander Command instead of a Commander Command. Just the way it was. Maybe Cryptic thought it was too powerful. It's not, but um, maybe Cryptic thought it was when it, when it, it initially came out. Um, as for other ships that came to mind for me was the Fleet Advanced Light Cruisers um, as well as the Cardassian Kelden Cruiser. In many ways, I almost feel like the new Undine Battle Cruiser is almost like the spiritual successors to the Cardassian Kelden Cruiser when it comes to what the, what the ship is supposed to fulfill. A, you know, a fast, maneuverable, um, broadsiding platform. That, that is decent for tanking. That's, that's what the Cardassian Kelden Cruiser, in my personal opinion, was kind of there for. Um, but now it's, I mean, it's still a decent shield ratio, but if, if, if for instance, if what you wanted to go for, for instance, for, was it really high shield ratio? I mean, we have the Fleet Cardenas right now, which has like, which has a really high hole with a shield ratio comparable to this ship, so. Yeah, um, not this ship. The Kelden has not scaled well um, in, in terms of a lot of the base stat things to today's standards in terms of starships. Just kind of the way things are. Um, the Fleet Advanced Light Cruiser is still great as well. Um, still a nice budget ship available from, from, available from Tier 2 military, which is nice. It also has a Lieutenant Commander Universal Pilot, so it, it, it's the exact same as the new uh, Undine Battle Cruiser as well. All right, so with that said, um, let's go over to the bio warships. Now, when you look, look at the comparisons here, um, at least from an offensive potential standpoint, it's actually decent as well. 
Um, what, what you're getting here is a Lieutenant Commander Engineering ability uh, versus the the old Tier 5 U Undine Battle Warship. You also get pilot abilities, which is, which is nice, or pilot maneuvers, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, unfortunately, because a lot of people don't like science, what you're probably going to want to do is um, you're probably going to make that Lieutenant Commander ability just for Tonic Officer 2. So you don't have to worry about the science stuff as much and then hazard emitters and something else. That's why you'll probably put in the science abilities there or things that just do more damage. There's, there's also that option option as well. Um, the, the DPS League um, has some, some various options there of how to do it on, on a directed energy weapon based build. Um, I think probably the place for you to look would probably be the legendary um, the, le the legendary flagship, um, whatever link link that is. Um, for, for that one. Go ahead and, ahead and see there. That ship has a Lieutenant Commander Science built into that ship, so you, 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 you can see what they're suggesting to put in that, those slots. Um, but you still could do double ox to bat if you really wanted it as, as well with this ship. Um, the old one to do double ox to bat um, to make that work, you, you would have had to make the Lieutenant Commander Universal in Engineering. As the same captain, that's what I, that's what I would have done anyway. So I can have lots of survival abilities, but that's just me. Um, five tactical consoles. The big downside to this ship again is that it's only four weapons in the front. Um, then again, most of the old warships and destroyers are four four. Just the way that 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 they are. I won't be showing many of those ships that are four four. Um, I mean, there is like the KDF Skarumba Siege Destroyer, which hopefully gets an update soon. Um, that's that's. Can make it bring make make it come back. I really wanted to come back seriously, um, but the ship is still a fine middle of the road um, warship. When it comes to the actual actual ships in, in in the game, I feel like it's a middle road between the legendary defiant and the rising pilot corvette. In many ways, I feel like it's it's trying to be a merge between the two. Uh, but that's just me. They both have Commander Pilot. Um, most people that have the Legendary Defiant are going to be like, look at this, this battle with Serpent, and they're like, eh, I have, I have the Defiant. 5-3, five, 5 tackle consoles. Higher hull anyway. I don't care about the shield ratio. I like this ship more. And that's totally fair. I would probably agree with you as well. I, I love the Legendary Defiant um, when it comes to its Bridge I've seen and such. I I think it's it, it's a fantastic ship. I like the Rising Pilot Corvette more personally. Getting one extra engineering ability isn't all of it, but it's a lot of it. Um, I love the Rising Pilot Corvette. That's just me being super biased here. Um, my worship is is still is still fine, but there are differences there. Um, in terms of other destroyers and warships, of course I'm going to bring in the Kelvin D7 because it's a freaking awesome ship. Got battle cloak, and this is one of those those ships that it's got a commander un universal, but it actually, in my opinion, works as a commander un universal. If you make a commander tactical, it feels like an actual destroyer. You make that commander universal engine in in engineering because of its base stats. It actually feels like a battle cruiser, with the exception that there's no battle cruiser commands. But outside of that, it honestly feels like, feels like a slightly more offensive battle cruiser. It's awesome. Um, I'm tempted to get another one and switch up my my KDF tactical name out of the not cool battle cruiser. But I don't know. I love the not cool console a little too much to give it up yet. But um, anyway, um, the other ship here that I thought was noteworthy was a Gemini Vanguard warship it's from the Sea Store instead of from, you know, lockboxes. Um, and it's a very, very solid ship, too. Um, slightly lower maneuverability versus the average for warships in the game. Uh, but I mean, 1.15 hull, 1.15 shields is, st is still nice. Um, Mayor Tactical, Lieutenant Commander Tactical Miracle Worker uh, basically means. You're going to rely upon those miracle worker stuff to, um, to do some decent damage. 
doesn't it's not commander miracle broker so you don't get six tackle consoles with this ship but it's it's still it's still a solid ship with vanguard wingman to help with with, the, with additional damage now for the traits and consoles obviously i can't really go into super in depth as to whether these things are good or not some people have already started to do reviews on the ships so feel free to see those reviews in terms of how good or bad these things are um in terms of me i'm just going to do just general speculation in terms of here's what the, the the description says here's what i feel that needs to happen with that description for these things to actually be good now obviously these old consoles are already out in terms of well they've been out for a long time in terms of uh the, the tier 5e versions it's just that, that the tier 5e versions don't have the passive stats honestly the passive stats kind of suck they both give you extra HP, which is nice, but the other extra thing, weapon power, meh, we already have lots of ways to get extra power, extra extra damage control, okay, I wish it was just draw extra percentage, extra hole regen instead of just improving the skill. That's kind of meh, honestly. Um, just saying. It, they, they, they could have done things cooler here. Um, now, as for the, the traits, I think this is where a lot more of their effort went in. Um, they both have to have a the particular theme. The cruiser is commander command, so of course, the, the, one of the options for the trait to trigger it is command abilities. Um, for the warship, it's commander pilot, so one of its triggers for it is going to be pilot abilities. Omega Bond's way better, um, but with, with, with Biolink, which is the cruiser's trait, if you use Ox to Damp, which no one basically uses, or, or Command Abilities, um, gives your entire team extra um, hull regeneration and damage resistance rating. With a potential to stack up to three times with, with, a, with a short duration. The problem is, damage resistance rating really doesn't matter, frankly. Um, it doesn't scale as well. I've talked about it in lots of other videos at, at this point. It's really the hull regeneration that matters. The problem is, as well with that, especially in harder content, you don't need your entire team to have, have high hull regen. You just need your tank or two tanks in your group, maybe, to have high hull regen. The problem is this is, this is this is balanced probably around pug runs in which everyone's getting hurt. So this is kind of a problem. Um, it, it needs to be high hull regen to actually matter. The problem is, if it's high enough regions to actually matter, then it would be way over overtuned as, as a team-wide buff for whole regeneration. This is going to be extremely situational to use, which, which is sad. Um, the problem is, like, if it's really, really high, high whole regen, it's, it's going to kick out lots of other traits that exist in, in the game, which Cryptic has done before. I just don't see them doing that here. So, that's just me ranting. Omega Bond is much more interesting. Um, if you use Pilot Blaze or Attack Patterns, basically everyone in the game that's doing a directed energy weapon build uses Attack Pattern Beta, or if you're a tank, you might use Attack Pattern Delta if you don't need more survival, and instead you want more damage and threat. Using either of those, or Omega if you want it, I guess, gives you... Gives you Gives your whole team extra damage and defense. No stacks, just refreshes. Um, problems that I see here is that you need a decent amount of damage to really matter. I mean, like, but still, it doesn't take much. I mean, a trait that gives your entire, that gives each one of the ships an extra 10% damage is a trait that gives 50% damage. That's not bad. It, it, It'd be more ideal if it was bonus damage to your team. Um, but it's still decent. I definitely see this more useful for nanny types of runs and ISA and, and ISC. Expected space, advanced expected space lead. Um, it might be interesting for that or pug runs too. But then again, I don't really do nanny builds. So I, I, I can't really tell you if this is going to be one of the meta traits for that or not.
there's people that can already do a million DPS without traits like this, so I don't know. All right, so for the TL, TLDR, we have two new Un Undine Tier 6 starships. What that means is that we have even less Tier 5 starships available from lockboxes now. Just kind of the way it is. It's trending that way. I wonder what they're going to do eventually whenever there aren't any Tier 5s left, really. Um, but, it, but we'll get there whenever we get there. Um, it's, only, it's only a matter of time at, at this point. Um, both of these ships have one commander seat and three lieutenant commander seats. Um, with whatever their main stat is for that type, it, it's commander of that plus lieutenant commander of the, of the other two, and then a lieutenant commander universal. Um, which makes the cruiser a bit better than, than the warship, in my opinion. They're both four wall weapons in the front and four in the rear. So a lot of D DPS captains aren't going to like it as much because they're like, because it's 4-4, it more lends towards beam builds. That's just the way it is. So the Undian Command Cruiser honestly reminds me of the TOS e Enterprise from Promotion Packs. Not the TOS Enterprise from the Legendary Bundle, but the original TOS Enterprise that was released in the game, the Tier 6 one from Promotion Packs. The one that's, that's Commander, Temper Operative, Lieutenant Commander Command. The Undine Command Cruiser reminds me a lot of that particular ship. Undine Pilot Warship reminds me of, of a 4-4 single character unlock that's slightly weaker of the, the Legendary Defiant. That's what it reminds me of the most. It also has a little bit of, bit of hints of like the, the Rising Corvette too. The two traits, the Cruiser trait Biolink, Oxyzamp and Command Abilities give Team Might Hold Regen that stacks up, up to three times. Probably very situational. The warship's trait is, is a mega bond in which attack patterns, which everyone has basically, and pilot abilities give team wide damage and defense. Again, defense doesn't matter, it's, it's a damage that we care about. That just refreshes whenever more whenever you use something that triggers it, this trait I, again. That one seem, seems to be a lot more useful. I mean, damage is always useful. It's just the question of is this damage from this trait better than this damage from this trait or this debuff from this trait? Feel free to talk to other, other DPS players and consult the DPS League on, on their Discord and such if, if, if you want more, more discussion there or on Reddit as, as to what things are actually good. But um, anyway, um, thanks for watching. Please stay safe and healthy. Um, COVID is not something that's going to go away anytime soon, it looks like. Um, in my neck of the woods, um, testing has gone way up. Um, which has made me go a little stir crazy, especially when a lot of people took the week off and I get and I got super busy <laughs> um, in terms of the, some of the stuff that I was doing. Um, yeah, um, I don't know if some of the other new stuff like the legendary Romulan ship. I don't know. That's probably going to be announced at this point by the time this video goes up um, Monday afternoon. Um, We'll see, um, and we'll see how the different adjustments for Cryptic is going to be doing with the schedule because of COVID, and how some of their stuff is going to be less less efficient, especially with California still in their lockdown state, diverse forms of that, and how that is, is affecting Cryptic Studios for sure. But um, anyway, um, thank you all for watching. Again, stay healthy. Um, do whatever you feel. Um, that you should based upon the law as well as whatever should make you comfortable to continue to try to do some regular things you know if you just sit in front of your computer that's not very good for you not good for your health make sure you're exercising um you know as well as your mental health socializing with people you know that's via zoom skype facebook whatever probably not just twitter twitter's slightly toxic toxic depending upon the community that you're talking to Kind of unfortunate, but it's it is what it is. Enjoy your week.